In the last few videos, we looked at Java's class path and what a path means and how that relates to the larger uh, world of Java and how you would use a class path when you're running Java. In this video, we're going to look at a build path. And you can see in this book, which is the Eclipse IDE book that we saw previously, page 55, Eclipse terminology, a class path refers only to the runtime class list. So when it's running, just like we did earlier as java.exe and then we ran our class whereas a build path refers to the compile time list and that's because Eclipse compiles your code for you. you you don't have to manually do a Java C like we did in our previous video and as it says here in this book right click if you want to see your build path right click on your project and select properties Java build path so here we are in IIB we go to our project and notice that we can't right click on this we know that this is a project you can see its type is project and we you think you might think well let's go to the java folder but remember this is just a logical folder it's not um it, you don't have the ability to click properties on it but you could go to the my app java right click on it select properties and then go to java build path and here you will see essentially what we've been talking about in the last uh, series of a few videos you have the source, so this tells you where all of your source code is located, so where your Java.java .java files are at. You can see any projects that might relate to this or be required by this project. We don't have any. And then you can see the libraries that this uh, uses. Now this is interesting because remember we had said that if you include a jar file in your class path, then the classes in it will be loaded. And this is exactly why we see integration api.jar because integration api.jar is part of the whole broker software. It's part of IIB. And you can see the same applies to Java compute.jar and jplugin.jar. These jar files, they have tons of classes inside of them. And if we want to be able to use a Java compute node, which is itself Java, then that Java file needs to include those libraries. And that's why we see these jar files listed here. And then separately, there's an integration bus Java library. So you see a, this, this Java file depends on a whole series of, and now we're talking about a library that is part of the integration bus. So this is not specific to Java at this point. And this Java integration API presumably is responsible for the ability for us to load these libraries here and then lastly we have a JRE system library so you can see these libraries uh, these jar files um, listed here and again each of those jar files holds classes so the whole point of this libraries tab is to see all of the possible or, or to load to be able to load all of the classes that our Java program here might need and then lastly, oh, and before we go on to the last tab, this page, if you need to add additional jars, you do that with this button. If you need to add, and, and add, add jars will assume that you mean somewhere in what you see on this application development tab, as opposed to the next icon, which is add external jars, which means you could go look on your, uh, on your desktop somewhere on your computer. Otherwise, you could add a variable. So if you needed to do that, if you had some variable, you can do it. And the same thing with the library. That's how you get these libraries in here. And then separately, you could have an actual class itself. So if you, you know, don't have it packaged in a jar, you just have a compiled dot Java. Remember, that's a dot class. You could add that here as a folder. So any of those dot classes uh, would be available with that link, that button. And then separately, again, this assumes somewhere inside your application development tab inside the environment here otherwise if it's on your hard drive and not yet in here just like external jars you could do this with external class folder and then you could also edit and remove them now the last tab is order and export so if for some reason you need to specify the order of your jar files anything really in the libraries tab any class that needs to be loaded prior to some other class essentially is what this is then you can click on these and move them around. And all of this is referred to as the Java build path. And primarily, uh, you know, these are the library. This is the most important tab of, of, of all of those, essentially. So when you are working on your project, when you're working in IIB, the Java build path is absolutely critical because it essentially allows the whole system to, to work. That is the build path. So that's the 
build path, but you might be wondering, okay, well, where's the class path if that's the runtime class path? What is, where is that? And the answer is you would go to run and then go down to run configurations. But in our case, this really doesn't make much sense uh, because we're not running anything from the toolkit per se, not Java. We're not running Java directly from the toolkit. It's the, the it's once we deploy it that the server, the integration server, does the running of, of things. But in any case, if you wanted to know, you could go to Java application, then go down to a new configuration, and then you would see these tabs. And this is all typical um, uh, Eclipse based uh, configuration. So you're seeing a class path here, you're seeing a source, you're seeing an environment, you're seeing a JRE, and uh, so on. So for the runtime class path in terms of IIB, what you are essentially talking about is this page here at the IBM Knowledge Center where you can see that if you set the MQSI profile command, anything that you place in version 10 commands and libraries, uh, it, well I should say that command, will place uh, the version 10 commands and libraries at the front of your search path and then can would that will override any combination of path or class path or library paths that we have been looking at through here in our java build path so there are if you that is essentially this idea of the runtime class and if you are running some sort of application in the command line then this page here should help you out and indeed it does talk about class path and that you need to add the jar files to the class path and this should look very familiar based on what we've been seeing in the last few videos. And if you have a particular class or a particular jar file or any other file that you want to have access across the system and by across the system what I mean is maybe you want all of your server, all of your applications across all of your servers and all of your nodes uh, to have access to a particular jar file, then you would have to put it at this level. If you want the integration node only, you put it at this level. If you want the integration server only, you put it at this level. And by this level, what I mean is this. So if your integration bus, if you want this, um, if you want your file to be accessible by the integration node and the server as a kind of hierarchy, put it here, and then the integration node will have access to it, and so will the integration server. If you only want the integration node to have access to it, so all of the servers inside that node, it would go here, and if you just want that particular server to have access to it, it would go in here, and all of that is explained on this page here. And here's a good example of how sort of these things fit together, adding Java code dependencies. So this is saying if you have Java code in your Java compute node um, that refers to other Java projects or to external jar files like we're going to see with log4j or a set of Java uh, object classes. If any of that is the case, you need to add the files to the project class path. And when you, this is the instructions to do that. We've actually already looked at this. But notice what it says. To add an internal dependency, you would click add jars and again, they're talking about add jars here as opposed to add external jars. And you select the jar that you want to add. Then you click on open copy the jar file to the shared classes directory, which we just looked at. And for more details of the shared classes directories, again, we just looked at that. If you do not copy the jar to a valid shared classes directory, and we're talking about on the server here, not on the toolkit, because really the toolkit is this section here. Th you also have to take that same jar file and put it in one of those shared classes shared classes directories because if you don't you're going to get a class not found exception error and this is all due to the idea that you now understand about shared classes and build classes in IIB and, and really in Java and it all comes down to this essentially this page here remember that the class path is an Eclipse terminology for our purposes this is the IIB server and the build path for our intents and purposes is the toolkit because we are building these things and testing them out inside the IB toolkit. 